Okay. okay. Welcome everyone to today's session. Um, week three of this um, cyber security track. Um, last week I mentioned that we should all have the installation files for Windows, VMware, and um, and Nessus on our computer just to, uh, in a way, save time. And um, so um this week we are still going to talk about vulnerability management right and um however the practical aspect of it i want us to just kind of have like an hands-on experience or hands-on hands -on task and not being theoretical every time and then we can now analyze and in a way explain um to you guys how it works in the real life scenario so um, there's no need to talk about vulnerability management again. So today we'll be installing VM, Nessus, and Windows OS. And if time permits, we we'll definitely run scan. And if time permits, so we we'll do the remediation and also the verification. And also some link that I used for um, the purpose of this class. And um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, as first, I need to bring up my virtual machine, my virtual box. I'd already downloaded it. Um, I have it a VMware player this. I have my Nessus and I have my Windows. And um, for VMware, I've installed that. It's just click and click and click and click. I was just thinking there is no point waiting for, um, there's no point showing us. And if you have issue installing your VMware, definitely you let me know maybe on whatsapp chat or and the likes so um i'm not going to use license key it's just free for a non-commercial use right um continue then finish and um since so for my windows i clicked on the link i shared with you guys and here i click on download tool now Right, so when you click on download tool now, it's going to download like a media creation tool, right? If you open it, um, getting a few things ready. So that's for Windows. I'm just going to um, do those installations synchronously, right? I've downloaded Windows. I just want to show you what I did. And special. That's all. While hello, hello. Is, uh, okay. Hello. Yes. Just can I ask a question? Yes, please continue. Please, for us that we already have Windows installed into our system, do we still need to do this installation? Do you have Windows on your personal PC or on your or do you have a VMware? Is it like a Windows VM or you have Windows? On my personal PC? Okay, so okay, okay, okay. So it's two things. You might not need to even download Windows and then um, also um, VMware, but I think you might still have to do that. Okay, so the reason why I'm trying to create a separate work environment for this assessment is that I don't want to run Nessus on my own device. I mean, I don't want to scan my own, my own network. I don't want us to see what is vulnerable or what can what could be expected on my personal PC, right? So that's why I'm trying to create a, a special work environment for the purpose of this class. In your own case, if you think, okay, we can just run Nessus and scan your PC yourself or scan any other application or any other assets, right? That is fine. Um, another thing is, I was thinking, if after downloading, I mean, after installing this um, VMware and I have Windows 10 VM on my on my virtual machine, I was thinking I would tell you guys to also try to, you know, have other operating system like Windows Server, Tosanahis, or have another application like a an obsolete application, you know, maybe like like old. Java version. You can also install like old Kali Linux, you know, a lot of things on that virtual box and try to scan more assets, right? And then you can maybe understand vulnerabilities better. However, if you think, okay, maybe if 
after maybe if you scan your own Windows PC and you understand the process, then that is fine. You may not necessarily do that. But if you just want maybe for the purpose of further assignments or um, further task, right? Just just want to elaborate your vulnerability management or vulnerability scanning experience. You might just want to have different assets, different applications on your virtual machine. And in this case, I don't want you to install obsolete application, old application on your own personal computer. So I'm just thinking of, let's have like a sandbox area, which is this VMware to, you know, perform a lot of things and a lot of manipulations. And that way you assure that your computer is safe. That's just the purpose of um, downloading this and installing this. Really. All right, Mark. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, you're welcome. So I think right. we want to click on download tool now, right? It's going to tell you all this and then you click on ourselves, get a few things ready. Like I said, I'm going to do different things synchron uh, synchronously. I have my Nessus. So I think I should just start installing my Nessus. Have I launched it? No, no, I've not launched my Nessus. Oh, so I have my... Sorry, I have a question. Okay, please. This a uh, Windows tool that you are trying to download. Are you downloading it inside the VMware or you are downloading it on your main PC? Oh, I downloaded it on my main PC. The ISO file, this is it. I have it on my main PC. However, I'm not going to, I'm not going to launch it on my main PC. I'm okay. going to mount it on my VMware um, workstation. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Please keep asking questions because there's a lot of configuration. And, um, you know, we have to just understand that at times I, I have to check some guide online to be sure that we are not, because we, are, we have to do a lot of tweak, you know, try to tweak our Windows computer a bit just to, show, just to ensure that we have more vulnerabilities, right? So please feel free to ask a lot of questions as, as it's coming. So this is my Nessus, right? So um, let me just recap. Don't let me be too fast. There's no point rushing. If we can't finish today, we'll continue next week. What I did was to download VMware, VMware Windows ISO file and Nessus, right? And I've installed this VMware player Launching it, this is the interface for the VMware player. I don't have any virtual machine on this yet, right? At the same time, oh, my video is not on. Maybe that would bring more communication. Okay. At the same time, I have, what am I doing again? Okay. I was trying to download Windows and show you how to download Windows. When you click on download Windows 2 now, it's going to download a particular um, media creation tool, right? And once you launch this media creation tool, it brings us to this place. So instead of upgrading your PC, so this is where, this is where the process is. For you to be sure that you're not um, manipulating or touching your Windows OS, we are only creating installation media, either as USB flash drive, DVD or ISO file for another computer. So we need this for, our VMware, right? So in this case now, I, I clicked on create installation media, right? Because I needed to download only ISO file. Then I click on next. And next, just Windows 10, what do you want? You want a 64 bit architecture and the likes. And then you click on next. Like I said, I need an ISO file because I don't have a USB. So for instance, you might decide to install it or download it to your USB flash. But I'm using ISO file in this case. Click on ISO file and then click on this. Then specify where you want to download. I mean, where you want to save the file. So in my own case, I saved the file to um, Cyber Avin, right? And Windows. And then let me just say, then when you click on save, let me just say Windows 1. When you click on save, it's just going to install. But in this case, I've installed already. I mean, I've downloaded already, so I'm going to quit the installation file, right? Because it took a lot of time. So right now, this is how I got the Windows ISO file, the disk image file, my VMware and my Nessus. So for Nessus, 
like the link I shared with us last week, when you come to your, when you click on the link, it's going to tell you to, let me just start again, just for um, people that are not on the call. So for Nessus Essential, right, I am here. So it's going to ask you for your first name, last name, and your email address to get authentic activation code. I've done that. And that brings us to, oh, why did I close the distance? And that brings us here, right? Because I have my activation code already. And because my PC is Windows, um, Nessus for Windows 10, right? So I'm downloading, I downloaded this particular one. When you click it, you download and everything. And after downloading, I have my file here. So right now I'm trying to install the Nessus application, double click. I think I've only done one step. No, I've not done any step. It's brought me here. Then I click on next, you know, just normal accept and everything. Next, click installation to begin. So let's, let's why this one is installing, right? Three things together. Why this one is installing, um, um, let's mount our this thing. Let me create a new virtual machine for the Windows 10 that we created. So create a new virtual machine. Like I said, it's a disk image file, an ISO file. So when you click on browse, I downloaded mine to a folder called Cyber Event, and this is the ISO file, right? So it's Windows 10 and later, yeah, this is the file I downloaded. The next, what's the virtual machine name? Let me just call this Windows 10. You can leave it that way, but I'm just, well, I should just leave it as default. No, let me just call Windows 10, anyone, depending on what you like. The Dix file, um, I'm trying to think about um, what I have on my Dix file. Recommended size for the 60 gig. I said, maybe I should just leave it as 60 gig, right? And then please virtual, okay, yeah. Let me leave it as 60 gig. I think I have more than that on my PC. So I'm just trying to check my... So I'm trying to follow what you're doing. So now I'm I'm saying there is Nessus, there is Nessus agent, there is Nessus okay. Which of it should we click? Let me check again. So in this case, right, this one, right? Yes, yes. So this one. Okay. Yeah, the Nessus 10 1.264 bits dot MSI. Okay. So let me go back to. Oh, we've been doing many things. I think I created the Nexus that was compatible with my Mac OS. What did you say? That's for, I I downloaded the um, Nexus that was compatible with my Mac OS. Okay. That was the Nexus ten point one two DMG. It's on the list anyway, but like I okay, when I this one. Okay, this is one. Yeah. Okay. So you are trying, are you trying to install it now? I've installed it. Okay, okay, good, good, good. So and for the other that as Mac, I mean you don't need to go through this process. So for us that are trying to um power on this virtual machine after creation, let me see the this thing, Windows 10. 60 gig yes, split. Okay, memory. I'm using two, two gig. Okay, nice. Let me customize hardware. Be sure. Um, so for this memory, right? I think my PC is um 16 gig. I think I have 16 gig RAM. So I might decide to increase 
the RAM for this, and you might decide to leave it, right? But I'm thinking I should just do three gig. What's three gig again? Three is, what's three gig in? Okay, let me just, don't worry, let me just even adjust it here. Three or nine something. Uh, in fact, I can even do four gig. I can do four gig then when I have more, um, what's it called? When I have more um, OS VMs on my disk and I might decide to reduce it. So I think that is fine. So then I can close it and then click on finish. Okay, so let me go back to my next source while that one is. Finish. Mm, what else can I be doing? This one is crazy. And I think I need to change something around the network to a bridge network because I want my virtual machine and to be to be on the same network as my computer. So I can still do that. I can still do that after the installation. That's not a problem. Still creating this. Where's my nessus? I'm expecting something to launch on my nessus, and I'm wondering, am I missing anything? I mean, I'm thinking now, of course. And Okay, this is fine. Sorry, guys. Has anybody been able to bring his or Anissa up? Are we downloading the <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. It's not going to be on your distance, it's going to be on your PC. Okay. Because it's 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 a web um how do I call it? A web application. <sighs> My PC is not even responding. Well, oh, this. It's a web client, yeah. <laughs> hmm. I was going to do this personally, but I was thinking it's best I show you guys, but like this is this is taking time. Okay, so this is the next scan, right? Advance, continue to look at host. So I just need to, you might want to just keep this, um, you might want to keep this area because at times it might be crazy, you might be looking for it up and down, you know. So, so uh, for I'm now, to, uh, I'm saying continue via SSL. Continue via SSL, yes, please. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 
So now it's not as essential because this is a free version, not the professional one that I'll be using for the purpose of this class. Uh, if you already have an activation, okay, I have an activation code, so I would definitely just keep this, right? And um, it was sent to my email, however, I copied it here. Uh, oh, Windows PC. Sorry, guys, my PC is frozen. Oh, so I have a lot to do today. Mm. No problem. Control C, activation code. Let me run this down. So create a username and password. Don't forget your username and password. I'm going to use cyber even. And for my password, I'm going to use cyber even too. No, don't let me tell you my password. Just use any password you like. So this is done. Oh, error wipe powering on. This is something I don't like. Interview to my visitors, man. Oh, God. This is what I hate about installation. I'm sure there will definitely be something, something you have to troubleshoot. My father the best settings in the world. Shut. Has anybody been able to install VMware and try to do this? I have the VMware, but my Windows is still loading. Is that trying okay. to play? Another person just trying to be sure that maybe if I'm the only one getting this error, because I've done this and solve it a little longer. I was thinking it would be better to show us. Let me use the virtual machine settings. I actually want to change this network adapter to bridge because I want it to be on the same network as my computer, my physical network. Right. Okay, is there another this thing that let me check the area again and see if that will solve the problem. What powering on this host supports Intel VTX? This hosts my computer, but Intel VTX is disabled. Intel VTX is disabled if it has been disabled in the BIOS or firmware settings, or the host has not been power cycled since changing the sensor. I find that the BIOS and firmware settings enable Intel VTX. Mm. Hmm. This is a thing. I'll get to the The OS. Sorry, guys. If you can help me out. The OS here, is it referring to my horn machine or the VMware itself? Then VTX might be disabled. Oh, troubleshooting guard. Using network the controller. VMware is used. The VMware is used in this case, right? Okay. Don't forget I did something. I changed my network adapter to bridge because I wanted to be on the same physical network. Let's have that. Oh. So I'm still wondering, there's nothing to change. 
Let me try again. It's the same. Oh, why powering on the O support interview TX, but interview TX is disabled. Interview TX might be disabled if that in the bio. I think it's my vision. Let me even see what does it everything is. Increase situation of the virtualization. Ma, this error is from your BIOS. You need to restart your system. Yes, it's my personal PC. Yes, yes, I. Oh, God. Yes, yeah, so you go to your BIOS setting. So you have to enable um, this. If you don't enable it, you won't be able to run them, um, launch a virtual um, machine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, Will you guys still remain on the call while I try to fix, while I try to restart my PC? Is that fine? Yes. Okay, I can even try to, okay. Um, let me stop sharing. Okay, uh, we join you back in, how many minutes? 10, 10 minutes max. Hopefully my PC would not fuck up. Leave me too. Okay, let me just assign it to a design that is working.
Sorry guys, I'm just trying to assist you with starting and the mumble stone. I will be with you in another minute. All right. Yeah. Sorry, my Windows PC can be really slow. I really don't want to restart to happen, but I never need this button. Who else has been able to um, launch Windows 10? I'm trying to launch it, but I'm at this place, that 60 gig page. So okay. you can have the op option of storing virtual disk as a single file or to split virtual disk. Okay, split it. Yeah, do the splitting one. Okay. Yeah. So then, do I have to customize hardware? Yes, click on customize hardware and I want you to change the virtual LAN part to um, bridge, bridge network. Okay, I'm not saying virtual LAN part. Um, processor, network adapter. Yes, under the network adapter, yeah. I have an a bridged. Yes, so so select the bridge network. Yeah, the bridge network. Okay. Should I select replicate physical network connection states? No, no, just select the bridge network. Okay. Um, That's easy. Yeah. Yes, and then ensure that the, the option of um power virtual machine while we're starting is on right. Let me check that. Um, connected at power on. Connected, yeah, connected at power on, yeah. Shit. This that should increase the memory is at two gig. It, yeah, depending on the memory of your main computer. What's your main computer memory? 16. 10 gig. You can, you can make it two gig or four gig. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you increase the RAM and the processor, that way you can be sure that that particular Windows virtual machine will be fast. So depending on how many CPUs you have and depending on... I have Linux already, you know. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, you have Linux already. Except you, is your, your Linux virtual machine, is it power on? Is, is it not off? No, it's off. It's off. And then, no, it does. It's, it will not matter. Okay. It is when you are trying to bring up the two VM were at the same time. So that means you have to manage your um Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was trying to use the first method of that didn't work, but now I'm on my bio setting. Okay. Come on, man. I'll be all those I can finish the for you to create, right? Yes, yes, yes. You can finish for you to create. I'm sure yours would not show since you already have Kali Luna Serapisti. Yeah. We don't have that issue. Sorry, guys. Um, that's an image, though. Yeah. So Mm 
Ok, advenez-vous de votre maison de technologie, sir. Um, let me on this side. Not clean for me. I have virtual other technology on my virus. Okay. I just gained that. I will just kind of piece it. I'm almost in. I'm done with the settings. I'm sorry, guys. As that, as as that going the solution. I think it's done. I'm saying it's a black. I'm saying a blank page now. Okay, okay. okay. it's it will could definitely look. Uh, it's saying books normally EFI VMware. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Adela, have you been able to set up the next one? Is it up and running now? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm able to set up my next source. I so on the on the page, um, so I have like welcome to Nessus Essential to get started, launch a host discovery scan to identify what hosts on your network are available to scan. So it's it's telling me to impute something like um an IP address, um a target IP address essentially, and I don't know what that is about. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I would definitely explain that that is why I wanted us to have like a different um so in your own case, you can just launch your your uh, what's it called? Your command window. I don't know what you guys use on Mac and do IP config. Try to what is your IP address? Check your IP address and then instead of so if your IP address is 10.10.1.1. You can do 10.10.1.0 slash 24 to just discover the host on your network. Or you might not even do a discovery and just go to a normal basic network scan and just scan your IP address. I mean, your PC IP address and see vulnerabilities you have on your PC. But we'll definitely get it yeah, as soon as my system. All right. Yeah. I think I'll just wait for you then. Okay, that's fine. Um, Any other person doing this thing along with us? Um. Do you have any question, any stop gap at all? Actually, I'm okay. I mistakenly downloaded the 32 bit Nexus and it's just telling me that there's an error or something. 
So I want to get in a so 64 bit. So okay, okay. Mistake. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's it's normal. Just look at me and I'm trying to enable my virtual okay. Yeah, it's normal. Anything that has to do with conversion or setup, just expect any error or whatsoever. Yeah. I am going to say something. So I said I have no issues for now. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. I'm downloading the next one already. I have okay. the so are you are you using virtual machine or you want to scan your host itself your pc yeah i have a vmware and i also have uh, the other windows one, okay okay okay. Yeah. okay good all right okay. that's fine so you can bring you can bring up your windows vmware like just bring it up because we'll do some tweak on his just to get more vulnerabilities. Oh my PC. Sorry guys, my PC is still slow. It's trying to do it. Um as I'm sorry, so once I'm able to log in, you can um give me the host. I assign the host to you. Okay. So you can give me those and then I can continue recording and share my screen. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That was why I tried to crack my piece and install up this before this blast. That's why the parts are so very annoying and slow. Okay, let me just keep us engaged. Um, um, let me ask a simple question. Can somebody tell us, like, give us summary of last week class? Like, what do you understand generally about vulnerability management? Um, Dolapo. I do like both. Are you here with us? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I said, can you just give us like a brief recap of what vulnerability management is? Um, actually, I wasn't in the class. I was in half of the class, actually. So, but I'll just give you a brief. Yeah, yes, yeah, just what you know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You talked about um, vulnerability management, and you said that, in my own explanation, I think is the management of um, preventing exploitation of maybe some attacks like like I realize it trying to trace some <laughs> I don't know how to explain it in my own words so sorry no not but, a problem that's fine it's that's like trying fine. It's, it's like trying to scan or trying to find a, a trace of a, a weakness like a weakness is yes weakness is yes. in the particular so that's, that's the, I think that's the short form of it, just to scan okay. and to test if there's the vulnerabilities um, available in a particular place or in the system. That's the short form. I came very late, so sorry. Yeah, no, that's, no, that's fine. Um, I am going, can you um, continue from where the lack of... Um... Uh, okay, yeah, we talked about vulnerability and you said vulnerability is a weakness in an asset or a loophole. You, okay. you talked about threats and you said threat is something that can exploit a vulnerability and you talked about risk. You said risk is what happens when you threat exploit a vulnerability. Yeah. And you also talked about uh, the vulnerability ranking and categorization. 
where we spoke about the CVSS, the CV, CWE, CVID, and so on. And we talked about the CVS score and the uh, CVLT ranking. Okay. And that one yeah, has to be from. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Um, um, Olaiwala, can you tell us the full meaning of this CV, CVSS, CWE that Anyobin just talked about? Hi, Olaiwala. Are you, are you with us? Yes, ma'am, we too. Yes. I said I am going to mention something around CV, CVSS, um, CW. Do you know the acronym? The, the um, what's it called? Acronym. Yes, CV. CV is common vulnerability. Um, some common enumeration. Yeah, common vulnerability enumeration, and CVSS, common vulnerability hey. score edit. Current system. What did you say? Common, Common vulnerability. vulnerability score credit. Scoring okay, system. thank you. Yes, scoring system. <laughs> Common vulnerability scoring system. Thank you. Oh, yeah. System, yeah. Okay, so um, Adiola, for the Common Vulnerability Scoring System, can I, do you have an idea of the severity rating? What is um, what are the severity ratings? Okay, so from the last class, you mentioned that um, because, uh, well, the CVSS, as we all know, is a common vulnerability scoring system where we know that um, once your CVSS score is below, or yeah, once yeah. it's below or between one zero point one to three point nine, that means your severity is low. Once it's between, and so, Ola, can you please mute your mic? Once is 7.0 to 8.9 is I, 9.0 to 10 is critical. So that means you need to fix up. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and lastly, as I asked, can you on, tell us the CV format? How does the CV format, how does it look like? Can you explain the CV format? Right. When you say CV format, you mean CV formats are written, right? Yes, 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 exactly. Um, I think the last the last number is usually the year. I need a sample or something to be able to analyze it. Okay, you can quickly browse and you know. Let us know. Let me just check first if you could. Oh my sister. My piece is on this fabric, I think. So. <laughs> I hope I will not join the all and just gonna buy Mac book now. Please put to Mac side. <laughs> what are you doing? Those? I don't know what you're what you're on about. <laughs> put to Mac OS. Is that not why you guys cannot even install your Mac OS? <laughs> well, because we are trying to you know protect shield ourselves from all these vulnerabilities that we are talking about. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, there's a code if for example we have CV that we have 20 20 that one one two. Okay. So CV is a CV just like the common vulnerability by the 2019 is going to be the year. Why the last code is the code that the, the, the company is using, for example, the way um window name the uh, Vulnerability. I think they use six digits. Yeah. That part that the number of that is particular to the way the company is. But what is the middle of the year? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm about to join now. Um, and then we can start from mm -hmm. where we we'll pick it up. Thank you. Yeah. What did you say? They have to leave the meeting to pass the host to you. 
Um, no, um, I think you, you can. Sh can you share your screen with us and we can look at this for them? You don't have to leave the meeting. But before you can even pass it, I have to be on the call. I have to be on the call before you can assign the meeting. So. But you're on the call now. No, I'm not on the call. Yes, I'm using my. She's using another device. Another mm -hmm. device to log in. I'm using a MacBook to log in. So I don't know what say. Because the MacBook. Excuse yeah, me, please. Can I ask a question? Yes, please, please do. Um, actually, the last question you asked um, the other madam, please, I didn't get the answer to that question. It was very low here. Okay, okay. So, yes, so I asked her about CV format, and she said we have CV, the CV ID format. And, okay. you know, we have something around CV-2021- maybe random four digits or five digits or six digit number. So that CV 2021 represents the year the vulnerability was published, right? And the four digits or five digits or six digit number, which can be up to seven or eight digits, represents the version of the um, fixes, the security fix of that particular CV. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 that's, that, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm, okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry for my PC just to, to you know to be on the start break today, but we won't allow that. Well, we understand this VM process very, very well, up to the risk level. Okay, um, as I said, is your Nessus up and running as well? Yeah. They want to show everybody Nessus. Okay, how about Ayan Gwemi? I think Dollar is fine. As I said, it's fine. Dollar Pop, Ayan Gwemi, I have a partner. Is it with my Nexus? Wow. Yes, is your Nessus up and running now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Since. Okay, okay, good. Um, Olali Wala, um, are you also on your computer? Is your Nexus up and running? Are you no, it's not up and running yet. My um, PC memory is very low, so it has a little bit of issue. But I'll make sure I fix it probably tomorrow. Okay, okay, that's fine. Um, Dolapo, what's what's your um status? And um, actually, I'm just installing it right now. I just did the activation code and stuff. Okay, okay. You've got some activation code from your email, right? Yes. Okay, good. I'm just like connecting to Zoom is watching Zoom is also a little bit. I don't understand. Okay. And I need to share my screen. If not, I'll just say you should. Continue on that piece So sorry, guys.
Oh, do you know my problem now? My Zoom is not launching. What is it, ma? I said my Zoom application is not launching. I'm here already, but it's just misbehaving. Sign. Nice connection. Okay, let me drop that. Maybe you should restart your system again. Yeah, I think I'm in now. Oh. After okay, so um, as is as you can give me access. Okay. Um, I'm looking for the option to pass the host to you. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, I've done this. I've done this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm muted. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, good. good. Yes, we do. Why are you just saying? I thought I have passed the host. Yes, I, I think I am recording now. Let me see. Yes, record is, is, is still on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I can, that is why I can't even sh um, um, share my screen. Okay. Let's start from where we'll stop. I've enabled the virtual machine the virtualization technology. Oops. So my Nessus was installing. Look at why I said we should try and save. Okay, so let me come back to my Windows 10 and relaunch it. And also my Nessus. Okay, that is installing. Okay, I think that is press any key to boot. I'm out again.
Why this is installing? What's going on? Controls. Oh. Understand. Oh, sure. mm. cool. yeah, work. What is your finance work again? Mm. This is. It's still loading, I think. After this, it's supposed to show something. It's still loading. Hold on for it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> my next one is loading on this one. So yeah, it's still loading. I hope you are loading now. I think it is because it was like this on my own page too before then. And it showed timeouts. Yeah, it showed timeout and EFI network. Then afterwards, it not showed some a blue. I thought it was some. Uh, yeah, this came up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So let me boot normally. Okay, boot from city. Oh, thank you. So please, on that blue page, you click enter setup, right? Blue page, yes, 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 yes. But do we all know how to move outside? I'm sure we know it anyway. You've said you've installed it. Like, how to move yeah, control, outside. Control, control to make, we allow you to move outside your, outside your VMware. And if you want to go back, you can just click on it. So. So let me wait for my windows to install. See, don't know if that's OK, let me install it. Sorry, guys. Today is Easter. And like peace and science would so be on all the data. So I have to configure when it's installing. There's no license key. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Pro. I accept. Let me just do this. Sorry, I could have I could have clicked the second option. I didn't know what I'm doing. Yes, install Windows 10 only. Yes, since I have 60 gig, that's fine. Next.
Okay, so I think this might take some time, right? So let me go to my presentation, then we'll talk. Do I have anything on my presentation other than just installing, yeah, just installation? Okay, while we wait, right? While we wait for my um, VMware to install and also my Nessus to be configured, right? Let's just talk about vulnerability assessments. Okay, so vulnerability assessment, I think I was trying to, I, I think I told us the difference between a vulnerability management and vulnerability assessment last week. Vulnerability management, vulnerability assessment is inside vulnerability management. Vulnerability assessment is just a process. Let me just say the technical, the technical process, right? Why management involves the overall process from asset discovery, you know, to um, also liaising with your stakeholders, understanding the policies and procedures around us, SLAs, you know, talking to the stakeholders, asset owners, and the risk assessment phase prioritize a particular um, vulnerability depending on the um, CVSS score or the value of the assets on which, as on which the vulnerability is. And then down to remediation, down to validation, you know, it's like a cycle and it never stops in an, organi in, in, in a, in an organizational process. And um, like I said, there, was, there, is also, there is automatic scanning and manual scanning. Manual scan is when you get involved in pen testing projects and a pen tester gives you the report and you are there to analyze it, right? According to the risk rating, do research on it and then assign to asset owners or fix. And you might also be the asset owner that would fix that particular vulnerability. But to this class, it should definitely be the automatic scanning where we use a vulnerability assessment tool to do the scan. And we are using Nessus for our vulnerability assessments this evening. And so um, the other time, um, Diola was at, asking me about asset discovery. And I said, for the purpose of this class, we don't need to do any, disco any asset discovery. But in a case where you are in an organization and you, you just want to understand how many assets are within a particular network, right? In that case, you have to do a search recovery. And that is if you know the, the, the subnet or, or the network IP of, of, of that particular area. Okay, e.g. in an office, you have about 10 systems or 50 systems, right? And they are sitting on the same network. You can just actually scan that network address, say slash 24, to discover how many hosts are within this environment for you to scan. And you, you can also use that to discover, to know the type of host. Is this host a Windows machine? Is it a Linux machine? Is it a server? You know, is it an application? That kind of thing. So asset discovery gives you information about a particular host, right? And once you have the asset discovered, it could be endpoints, it could be roaming devices, it could be network devices, anything. And once you have the asset discovered, then you, are, you move to the vulnerability scanning parts, where you scan that particular IP or list of IP address or list of, of the network IP. So in this case, in today's um, training, we won't really do, we won't do anything on around asset discovery. I will just show you, but we won't do anything around asset discovery because I already have a host mail that I want to scan, which is the Windows 10 we are trying to install on our virtual machine at the moment. That is the host I have in mind to scan. And just like I said initially, we changed the configuration of the host, the NAT address to bridge network. Bridge network means we want this virtual machine and our host computer to be on the same physical network, right? Such that if I try to, if I ping, if I ping the IP address of this particular Windows 10 I'm trying to install on my host computer, you should be able to reach it. And that way I can scan that, pass that IP address on my Nessus, on my Nessus that is configuring at the moment. So that is the, and the purpose, and the reason why I'm doing this, I think I've explained to others before you guys joined, is that 
I don't want to run scan on my host computer itself. I want to run assessments on a different host. So an assignment would be before the next class, right? I want us to download Windows 7, I think, um, um, uh, as is that already has Kali Linux, you might download Windows 7 or Windows, Windows Server 2008, all those obsolete Windows system or any application that you know that you might run on your virtual machine, download it, right? Install it on your virtual machine, maybe just Windows Server 2008, just one or two, and also try to install obsolete applications, e.g. old Java edition, old Mozilla Firefox, old Chrome edition, on your Windows, either Windows 10, and then run more scan. So that means you are not only you, you don't have you are not only as um, scanning one access. That means you have like two or three assets that you need to scan. I just want us to have more reports, more vulnerability assessment reports. But for this class, I will just use this one and probably install one of the obsolete OS, right, and compare the results. And then we'll also tweak something like on this, um, we do some configuration settings on this, our windows, you know, we go to reject edit and do some configuration just to have more vulnerabilities. And then we can have enough um, vulnerability results to do the assessment itself, like, and that will move us to the risk assessment part of it, right? So that is, so today we definitely vulnerability assessment. Then this vulnerability scanning would spot all lowest and third party vulnerabilities. Third party vulnerabilities means you have, say for instance, on my computer, on my PC right now, I have different application, right? I have Zoom, I have Class 54, I have UTME, I have Edge. I'm sure I have a lot of applications on this particular PC. If I run assessment scan on this PC, if if I'm if I'm running the old Zoom, old version Zoom, and maybe Zoom already releases new updates or new or new version, the network scan will pick it up. If I'm just like I don't have, like I I don't have um, paid version for my my Office 365 for instance. And maybe the upgraded version, the crack version is not safe or it has some weakness of vulnerability. My network scan will pick it up. So that is what is referred to as third-party vulnerabilities. Like you have Java, say for you have 50 applications. If there's only vulnerability on those 50 applications, it will definitely pick it up. And vulnerabilities including vulnerabilities in the content management system. And this comes to say you are scanning a web application, right? you get vulnerabilities on that particular web application or you're scanning the database, you get vulnerabilities on that particular database. So, but today is just on a particular, on a particular um, endpoint, which is um, the Windows 10 we are trying to install at the moment. And once we have this vulnerability score, then we will definitely analyze it by downloading the reports and then just check some things, compare to see the score, the age of the vulnerability, is it exploitable? What will you do if you have this kind of vulnerability in your organization or the company you work with? Who do you talk to, right? And what will be the impact on business? What will be the impact on your organization network or reputation? We'll talk about that. And then we'll try, we also try to fix some of these vulnerabilities, right? We'll remedy it ourselves. And then we'll now rescan and see if Nexus will still detect that vulnerabilities that we just fixed. So we're just going to see everything from end to end, right? From scanning to assessments to remediation and then confirming if we've actually fixed some of these vulnerabilities. So we'll definitely do that. We'll try to you know, do some upgrade, update some application, and then we will scan again and ensure that, okay, we've maybe solved the critical ones or the high ones or, or the high vulnerability. So, this is the whole process for vulnerability assessment. Yeah, um, that's just the only slide I have here because today it's supposed to be like practical. And then these are the useful link. I this link I check this link for some configuration trick. How do you configure local accounts? How do you do some credential scanning? All those kind of things. I will definitely share this um, this slide with you soon.
there's really not there really there's nothing much on this bible for the last one so um let me see how far oh god this is so, so your, your, your system is really slow because i started doing my own after this and it's as in you can you can say that again even this one <laughs> even this one <laughs> when is the system the compilation the compiling plugin is still on it too yeah but even if, even if this one is slow i expect this one to be really fast uh and now it's all the next one nothing else hmm can we talk about okay can you just ask me a question why this is installing and probably we just do the installing um the scanning is served next week because it's almost six o'clock and I, I wasted a lot of time today. I'm so sorry. But do you have any question around vulnerability management, vulnerability assessment? Guys, just or any random question, just straight at me. People Thank should you. ask question, please. Yeah, last week you mentioned um a job like a vulnerability analysis, or I can't remember the job role. The vulnerability management response analyst, I think, yeah. Okay, so if for that job role, is there any like course that it, someone has to do or the knowledge you get is just enough for it? Okay, so for that particular job role, right. It's okay, so it's two things. You might, like I said, like I think I've told us this thing that we should all try to do our security plus exam. And what a security plus exam will do is to just give us foundational knowledge about cybersecurity. You know, all the technical terms, brute force attack, and social hijacking, cryptography, um, um, remote code execution, illusion of privilege, you know, all these technical terms, because I don't want to start presenting that as it would be boring right if we are not doing practical so like i said i advise us to you know write security plus or if you cannot even write the exam at least try to read the manual i think i sent i sent us the video to that security plus just your leisure time just you know go through it and um just understand security time right majorly for it for it to just give you like an ease while doing your work what other things do you need for um for uh what's it called the the job nothing so much apart from your your theoretical knowledge and maybe have a bit of concept on how this and i mean how it works right and let me let's let's let me go through one let me go i think i saved one Okay, let me go. Let me just search vulnerability management. Total shift. Okay, okay. <laughs> this one vulnerability management. Work closely with EIT security operations to manage streams of work and your technical plan to remedy, to plan for and remedy the vulnerability and defense system. From time to time, we will have physical vulnerabilities we need to manage. We'll be a key part of the team working alongside the incidents. Management to ensure critical vulnerabilities are mitigated and remediated in a timely manner, reporting at both technical and summary level, frequent analyzing with internal and manual supply, escalation of issues. Contribute to documenting as in assisting prioritizing the yeah, ICB with risk management with risk management and everything. Sorry, I rushed through this. I'm just trying to see if there is anything I need to you know point at. So let me go back to your question. Is there anything you need to do? At first, it would be okay if you, you know pick up with discretion plus um textbook, maybe not for the purpose of the exam writing, but just to have you no. Know, more security concepts, terminologies, and how they work, right? Apart from that, 
right now, what we are doing is to scan an asset, just one asset, right? And an asset that has maybe one or two applications on it. Note that if you work in a firm, a bigger firm or a medium scale firm or a small firm or something, you would definitely have more than one asset. You might have like 500 assets, thousands of assets to scan, right? And all this kind of will definitely be like on a schedule scan, like, okay, this should scan on Monday, this particular, on this particular network, you should scan like on Tuesday on, on Sunday, depending on your policy and SLE. And what you do, so depending on where you work, some organization will say, you just manage it. Like once you scan, you've done the risk assessments, you've generated the reports, you assign to people that will fix it. Or some will say, you will also sit down with fixing it, depending on your level of knowledge. But in most corporates or in a proper well-functioned organization, you're not expected to fix or to remediate the vulnerability. You're expected to just advise asset owner on how to fix the vulnerabilities. Look at these people now, they said management. They're not saying you have to fix it. Management means management to ensure critical vulnerabilities are mitigated and remediated. That means you are the one working with assets owner, application owner, or the stakeholders to ensure that they fix any vulnerabilities rated as critical based on what you 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 presented to them, right? And so, however, imagine telling a developer to fix a particular application, and you know, developers, for instance, they may not even have understanding about security that much, right? They need to just to kind of bring them to, I mean give them more clarity about the vulnerabilities. And that is where your work is. There is a legion of privilege on, on Windows 10 or on a particular application. You are expected to go online, use your necessary resources, and search, read more about vulnerabilities, how it could be fixed, what could be the impact, right? Understand all these things. And then before you now release the developer, and then maybe in a way, give them guidelines on how to fix it. Oh, you don't you don't know code. I don't even understand your code, but you can in a way all these vulnerabilities, all these vendors, what they do is they provide solution. You can give, you can present the solution to them and say, okay, maybe somewhere in your code, in your particular library, you need to add this, you need to disable this. They understand that technical terms. You need to disable your um NGS version, for instance. Right? Your, if your NGS is, is you, are, you are running a, an obsolete version, you need to upgrade it. You know the menu of NGS, something like that. Or say for a web application scanning, it displayed the server, the server um, OS. Please disable that server information. They know where to disable it on their code, right? So something like that. So you just need to kind of give them, I mean, you have to bring them to that understanding of what they need to do. And maybe not how they, how they need to do it, but what they need to do, you know, explain is breaking down some them in, in their own term, in their own terminology. And then that will ease the fixing for them. So all you need to do really, well, if you can do the S plus fine, however, you might not have encountered all vulnerabilities in your life, but it's always all about research, 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 research. There was this time, sometimes last year, December, is it December or November? December, no, December, November ending December. December, when log for the vulnerability, it's a lot of organization. I did not have any idea about log for the vulnerability. But it was that day that I started doing research on it. How can we mitigate it? Are we even affected at all? How can I trick my scanning tool to, to search for this? Because it, maybe the vulnerability does not have a fix at the moment. What can we do? What can we do to mitigate this, right? But it wasn't just me. It wasn't just a me problem alone. It's people, including the application developers, because it's affecting a particular um, Java library, right? Like a Java library and everything. And all of a sudden, we all, have, we all have to sit together. But before I actually even fix that meeting with them, I've gone to do my research about vulnerabilities. How, what's impact? What's the impact? How would this affect us? And that all depends on the knowledge on the knowledge you have about the company you're working with, 
and maybe your security, your experience in a way. And so as you encounter different vulnerabilities, you get good at you get good at it every day. You get better at it every day. So I I could bet it with you that once we finish this course, like this vulnerability assessment, risk assessment, you can shoot out your CV for maybe a junior role in vulnerability management. And yes, if 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 you prepare well for the interview, you definitely get yourself that job. There is nothing else we do. It's a simple process. The other one is communication with stakeholders, managing people. What's our procedure saying? What's our SLA saying? What do we need to fix? Those kind of, and that one depends on the company you're working with. You can't just gain that knowledge without working with a particular organization. So yeah, um, that's it. Yes. I hope you understand. I don't know. Have I been able to explain or? Yes, you have. So maybe you tell that the important part, majorly, aside being able to use the tools, yeah, part will be being able to give information to your stakeholders and all. Yes, understand the requirements with organization. Thing, SLA is the way to fix high critical, the way to fix low, all that kind of a thing, and depending on the exportability level as well. Yeah. Um, any other question? Because right now it's like this thing will not install. It's like it's crazy. Oh God. I should have just done this. Okay, after installing Windows 10 and the Nessus what next? Yes, I want us to um, run scan, right? So, okay. Okay, don't let me even waste your time. Um, uh, what do I want to say? Um, as is that you have the Windows 10, you have the Nessus set up, right? Yes, can you share your screen? Is it okay. possible? Are you, okay. let are me, you let me see sharing your screen? My laptop, okay. If you're comfortable sharing your screen, then no let's way. just continue that way, right? And we don't have to wait for my home to install. We don't have to wait for my own to install. Um, yes, let me wait for that to share, to share your screen and then I can show us what, because I want us to do assignment actually against next class because if I know that I've just done this, I was thinking I needed to show you guys what to disable, what to do and I'm so sorry. I didn't plan this way. This is going to take years. Okay. Oh, uh, who is able to share our screen? Then I can show us what we need to do. Because that's his journey with his with a PC now. Okay, that's fine. There was even this. You have to stop sharing for me to be able to share. It. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. My PC. Okay, I think I'll stop sharing. Yeah. As that, I'll stop sharing. Are you, or do I need to give you like admin rights? I mean, host. I think I'll to make it yours. Not this business. Huh? So. 
I think I'm sharing my screen now. Can everybody see us as our screen? Uh, yes, I can see my screen from my second device. Guys, can you see us as our screen now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what's the display? <laughs> He's asking for the region. I asked. Yes, hello. Yeah, can you? Uh, okay, can you please sign in? That's close. Close first. So I need to show something. Yeah. Okay. So, um, guys, this is the network. This is the interface for. This is the interface for Nessus, right? And what we are trying to do, according to my um, slide, is to um, scan our um, Windows machine, right? So when you, when you click on create new scan, so, okay, now, Diola, you were asking something around OS discovering and yeah, basic network scan. OS discovering, like I mentioned is, if, okay, um, as I click on the OS discovery, let's just go through it because right now we are not discovering any hosts because we already have a particular OS in mind that we want to use, right? But OS discovering is, if we want to determine how many endpoints or how many assets are on a particular network, right? You, are, you want to discover list of IP addresses that you want to scan, for instance. That is host discovering. If you go to discovering, um, um, as I said, under discovery, can you, so under scan type here, yeah. under scan type, I want you to click the option for scan type. Can't type. Yes, can't type here yeah, on those discovery. Yes. Can you see that host discovery means if you want to host enumeration means okay, on a particular network, I want to get the list of um, um endpoints like hosts. And OS enumeration means 
okay, I have a particular list of hosts. I have five IP address. I want to determine the OS running on this five IP address. Is it a Windows server? Is it is it a network devices? Is it a database? That kind of thing. Post scan means I want to understand the ports opened on this host, on a particular host. Do we have ports 80 open on a particular host or is XMB and um, ports 5 is it open? That kind of thing. Is my telnet ports open, right? And the ports scanner has ports scan common ports, ports scan all ports. Post can come up with is, say for instance, the assessment is, and this is majorly used for maybe the pen testing project. For instance, the assessment is try to see if a particular host is vulnerable to SMB version one, or try to see if a particular host has tennis ports open. And you know that tennis is ports, ports what again? What's tennis? Like ports 21. I have to be ports 21. Sorry, guys. <laughs> who knows sports? Who knows tennis sports? Oh, let me give you. Pot 20, pot 20. Pot 20. Pot 20. Pot 20. Pot 20. Yes, FTP is pot 21, right? 2021. And you want to determine if SSH pot is open, secure shell pot 22. That kind of a thing that you can define that particular common port. Um, as I can even just click on one of these, click on ports can come up common ports. Okay, and scroll down. So you say common port, like, do you want to see if the pink host is trying, okay, this particular um, settings is going to check if TCP port is opened, if ARP port is open, if ISMP port is open on a particular host. Right, and it's going to use the scene scanner, nest, net stars, and scan come up. On a normal day, a pen tester can actually do this using Nmap on Kali Linux. But what Nessus is doing is, is giving us the GUI to discover a particular port or a particular OS on, on the host, right? And so we are not actually doing this, we are not doing all discovering. We already have a particular host that we plan to use. So that is just host discovery generally. You want to discover, okay, say for instance, you are in a cafe or you are at the airport and the IP address of that airport is 172.32.16.8. Maybe the IP address of your PC when you are connected to, when you, when you are connected to the um, 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 wireless, um, the device of, 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 of that of that airport, right? And you want to check how many hosts are on this network, right? You can just do 172.16.32.0 slash 24, right? To discover how many devices, is it mobile devices, is it Windows on this particular network that I'm using? And then you can now, you can now that will give you a list of IP addresses, right? And then you can now further do, I want to know, is somebody connected with his or PC or with his or her phone? And is it Android or iPhone or is it Mac PC or Windows PC? And that goes to the OS enumeration, right? So, you know, for an hacker, if an, for an hacker, if an hacker wants to do a pen testing, he or she needs to understand the, the scope, right? What do I even want to attack? What do I even want to exploit? So, I need to understand is this person you, using Android 4.0, when the latest version is like Android 7.7, and Android 4.0 already has vulnerabilities. Is this person's phone updated, or can I kind of see a vulnerability that I, that I could exploit? So you have to do your animation very well. You have to gather all this information before you now start exploiting. So that is the host, host discovering part of it. So you can cancel it. Um, um, as is that you can cancel that. So. You can click on cancel, or you can go back to your scan. Anyone, they cancel down, but my scan, yeah, you can just go back to my scan, not a problem. So now, um, click on create new scan again. You can use so today we just want to do a basic network scanning. So before you click on basic network scanning, sorry, I just asked. We have different types of scan scan um scan assessments here. We have advanced scanning, you know. E.g., malware scanning means say you want to scan for a particular malware, right? 
or is there malware on this Windows or Mac OS system? And say, for instance, you want to do vulnerability assessment on a website, on a website, um, maybe on your church website or any website, right? You will not just do basic network scan. You can just click on web application test scanning, right? Or you want to scan a particular mobile device. For instance, you want to scan your your mobile device, and you know your that is if your computer, which is your computer, is a particular IP address. If you guys are on the same network, you should be able to scan your mobile device and see if it has any vulnerabilities, for instance, right? And there are different types of, there is one a crime malware, ransomware. You want to check if your host or your device is, is susceptible to one a crime ransomware attack, you can click this. Or you want to check the Spectre and Meltdown um, uh, malware as well. You can, depending on what you want to do, they have, as I can actually scroll up to see different types of scanning tools. They have different vulnerability I mean, that they see the log 4 years. Yeah, see this log 4 years. I would say as at October last year, it was not here. But because it's a vulnerability that is now like, that affects almost all organization. Next house, they did something by, by upgrading their assessment tool to be able to scan for Nessus for log 4 years, log 4 years, log 4 years, yeah. And what happened was when this happened, my Nessus council could not detect log 4 j because then it was like a new attack. They've not really had like a fix for it. But as time goes on, as research goes on on that particular vulnerability, they've been able to create something that could check if your application or if your environment is susceptible to log 4 j I'm sure we all know about this and ransom, one acquire somewhere, pet share somewhere, you know. It's something around vulnerability too. And there is, Print nightmare. This print nightmare is vulnerability on majorly on on Windows for Microsoft, right? And that's happened also last year, sometimes mid last year. And now they've been able to create like a an assessment tool that will scan if your device or your asset is susceptible to print nightmare. And that's about the 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 technical bit of what we need to scan for. However, if what you're applying to scan for is not even here. So just go to your basic network scan or advanced network scan and run general scan on it. Um, as well, you can help me scroll up. I mean, scroll down. I want also to see the compliance parts. Yes, compliance parts in these cases, um, I think I might have to know this down. I might have to just introduce us to different standard and um, um, different standard compliances that we have in, 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 in frameworks that we use in an organization, e.g. PCIDSS. PCIDSS is one standard that if a, an organization is dealing with credit card data, they need to be compliant. They, they, they need to comply with PCIDSS standard. And so for this time, you want to scan your network. If your network is, is PCIDSS, PCIDSS compliance, right? You can just click on PCI quota this scan to do that. So it's just a whole lot. Internal PC network scan. It's just to check if there is like um you have like a leak credit card that is not encrypted in your environment. You know, a lot of things around that there are different requirements on PC DSS. Okay. Um, as I can let me scroll up again and then let's just do the basic network scan for, for today. Okay, so let's call the name of the scan. So we create a new scan. You can give it a name like Windows 10 or what, what do we plan to scan? You can give it like Windows 10. Description, anything, any description, any description. And then, so now go back to your, so we need to, what is our target? Go to your Windows 10 and fetch the IP address. 
you don't have an internet i have an internet and you chose bridge network right yes i uh, can you hear me okay yes i can hear you i chose bridge network and there is wi-fi I ask, can you hear me yes i can hello can you hear me as it seems your computer Oh, can, just, just, just. can you hear me? Hello. Elsa, can you click on the internet and see if you can connect to the Wi-Fi you are connected to? So what I'm trying to do is to get the IP address of Azuzat's um, OS. Can you hear me? It's bridge next to okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so because why is it not problem. connecting to? Just, I want you to, just, okay, okay, that's fine. Cancel it, that's fine. I want you to, why is it not loading the interface? I want you to do IP config and just get the IP address of your Windows. Well, the, it's not. At the same time, I want you to also ping that IP address and see if your PC can reach the Windows VM. Okay. Why is it not so? Sorry, guys, we're just waiting to get the IP address of Azizat's um, this thing. Should I replicate physical network connection sites? Oh, as I what's what's going on? Can you una pumo bombing on Hello, can you hear me? Your internet. Yeah, can you... Do you have any reason why it's not loading the Windows interface? No, I don't. I'm trying to connect to the network. No, no, that's that's fine. And that's why. Right. So this, the, this thing is fine. I just want you to load your this thing and then it just get the IP address of your computer. Oh, I'm really not in that top. Laptop. Laptop, maybe. Laptop. Okay. My motivation. Mm. But usually it connects to my Wi Fi. Joba, I'm charging. Something went wrong. Oh. Mm, what's going on? 
has been done, what's going on? Does anybody has have has anybody else been able to get um Windows launched on VM? Hello everyone. Why is I can't is anybody talking? Like I'm not I can't hear anybody. I've been talking for a while, but you didn't hear me. I don't know. Ah, uh, she's group class level. Yeah, group class. Hello. Is anybody talking? It's like I can't even hear anyone. I've been talking though, but I can hear you. I don't think you can hear me. Whoa, I can't. I'm just hearing you now. Oh god, so sorry. I was like, am I muted or something? Okay, so why why is your Windows not loading? I don't know why it's unable to connect to the network. It's complaining that it can't connect to. It's like it's not saying the internet that is on my main laptop. Mm, that should be the VMware setting. But does anybody have an idea? It's, 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 the internet doesn't even, so I don't know why this one is not. Um, Ma, I wanted to ask, is it a most we use VMware? Okay, let's just, so the, the issue is I don't want us to scan. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I want to ask, is it a must we use VMware? Because if it is virtual box, I'm very sure I wouldn't be having issues Hello? installing all this on virtual. Hello, Ma, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, I wanted to ask, is it a must we use VMware? What about virtual box? We can use virtual box. It's not a must we use VMware, actually. Okay, it's okay, because I don't think I'll be having, I have Windows 10 installed on my virtual box already. And is, and is it working? Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not in my system. I did it yesterday with okay, my okay. Nexus, everything. So okay, I'm think, quite uh, not in my system. Okay, okay. I think, um, I think that's the Probably they should try install it on virtual box and see if it will work out. Because I had mm -hmm. no issues installing it on virtual box yesterday. Virtual box, yeah. Yes. Just starting all over again, but I think it's almost, I don't think it's almost loading now. Okay, okay, no problem then. Yes, yes. But if not, maybe what we can do is try to get everything ready in the next nice class. Um, but let's let's just wait, I think just a moment, I, I think it's about to, to load uh, Windows now. Okay, yeah, fine, fine. It's, it's almost, she's almost there. She's almost there. Sorry, guys. Keep... You're middle of the right? Yeah, she's almost there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, she's Hmm. Oh, this internet still works. trying to connect to that to internet. This is the same problem. Just click, I don't have internet. Let's see. I think it was what I clicked earlier. Connect with limited setup. Connect with the limited setup. That's the limited setup.
Ga. Okay, so name. Google <laughs> this is a curse question, and there's no way to skip it. Let's take anyone else. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh. This Microsoft and this, they are playing for this thing. No one is fine. The most important thing is to get to. Sorry, she's almost she's almost there. We just need to get the IP address of the of the windows, then we run our scan. Don't take several minutes, please. Oh. Please let's run one scan for today and then we call it a day. And I promise next week it's gonna be like that. I will have got my own configuration ready. Except somebody has is our own launch already. Mm, several minutes. Uh, Adiola, are you on your PC? Oh, no, you are going to scan your, don't worry. Don't let us scan your PC. And that will not work. Does anybody ask any question while Windows is doing its own? Let me welcome more question again.
Oh, yeah, we're there. We're there. We're there. We're Finally, there. we are here. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Let's pray. Let's pray. You want to check the internet. I'm not sure if the internet is essential. But uh, can I still get the IP without the internet? Yes, yes. So go to your CMD and do IP config. Mm. Okay. I can confirm. Yeah. So your IP. Oh God, because there is no one Oh yes, it's there. No. It's one six nine. No, there's it. We need the IP four address. Yeah, that's it. One six nine dot two five four dot nine one dot two three five. This is it here. It's just auto configuration of people for address. Okay. Okay, copy it. Or oh, you might not be able to paste it, right? But it's looking like is it I can so go to your go to your main computer. Okay. On next and, right? No, yes, your main computer, your main host, your CMD or your main. Store. No, I want to see if your host can reach that IP address. So ping, then ping, ping that IP mm -hmm. address. Uh, let me confirm the IP address. Yes, ping the IP address and then space minus T so that it does not time out. 169, okay. Hold on, please. Dot two five four. Dot nine one. Dot two three five. You said I should then do what? Um, space minus space. Space, space minus. I don't want it to time out. Yeah. Minus what? T T for time. Okay. Mm, ping transmit failure. It's not even saying it's not reaching it. It's not even reaching it at all. Control C, Control C. This IP, address, this IP address does not look like the IP address. That's mine. The same thing is showing. Could it be because there is no internet? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, can we can go back to a virtual machine and try to see if we can disable firewall on that virtual machine or your Windows virtual machine? Okay, I'm on fire. I'm, I'm on the virtual machine here. No, you can just type WF dot MSC. No, just search for WF dot MSC. From the search bar. From your yeah, the search bar of your window of your Windows VM. WF dot what? Dot MSC. Mm -hmm. mm. No, that the program. Yeah, you should say okay. Go back to program. Yes, I should go back to the start button. The start button of the Windows mm -hmm. thing. Mm. What's this? Um, control R. 
control, just press control R. We need to even work. I want to run, Windows run. Oh, no, no. Windows. Oh, this is VMware. Mm -hmm. When is this application? This right? This is what you want to do? Yes, exactly. So you now type wf.msc or, or search for run and type wf, wf dot msc. MSC. Yes, okay. Okay, yes. Because we need to disable, let's disable the firewall. Yeah. Look, click on this Windows Defender firewall property. Right. Have you clicked on the Windows with a firewall property? Yeah. This is what I'm clicking, right? No, no, no. This um other public profile is at yes, 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 that one. So we want to switch it off. Okay. Switch private profile to her. Choose yes, make it off. Um, can also make the public profile off. Okay, now go back to your host, your computer, and let's ping it again and see if it's going to reach it. Your computer is safe. Okay? Mm -hmm. Try to ping it. You can just press your up arrow. Okay. Mm. Still the same thing. Still, uh, Transmit field is not even saying it's not it's not even doing request timeout. Hmm, troubleshooting. This is sorry, troubleshooting. Yes. Is this auto configuration of the It's not. Okay, um, guys, um, I'm thinking of, I don't want to waste our time. I'm thinking of what we can actually do right now to get something done. And since this does not seem to work, what I'm trying to do is ensure that our host PC can reach um, the, the Windows VM. And if that's happen, then we can now scan that particular IP address. But if our host PC is not being able to ping the Windows VM, then there's no way we can scan that IP address, right? Um, do you think we should just scan our IP directly? I don't want us to do that. That's not a shot. And this is still just one. Um, as I said, can you just do IP, IP config? Of your particular window of your host. Can you see the way this? Can you see that we have IPv4 address? Can you see this? How this displayed is different from how that first one displayed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'm explaining something like 192.168.1.35. Okay, guys. For example, say for instance, the IP address of yours is 192.168.1.35. As I don't we will not scan your distance. So go back to the next one. I don't want to show us, and then we cannot do that without sharing our screen. So as I go back to the next one, and then what you do is to input the IP address in, right? The IP address of that particular host you want to scan. So in this case, we are saying 192.168.1.65, right? 1.35. Right, so when we input the IP address here, 192 says 1.35, then scroll, scroll up, 
So before you click on save, if you come to schedule, you know, schedule after general. So schedule means, like I was saying, if in a particular organization, you might want to say this can should not run until Sunday morning or until Sunday evening, right? So you, then you enable the schedule, like clicking on this and enable, but because in this case, we want to generate the result now, we don't need to schedule it. And notification, as I click on notification, Notification is saying, once this scan is completed, please notify me, notify my email address. You can put in an email address and then it will definitely tell you that, okay, this is, but before you can actually do this with your organization, you need to set up your SMTP, SMTP server that is sitting with your IT updates. That's not your work as a vulnerability manager, right? It would have been configured. Secret engineer would have configured all these things for you. Or, or what we've been doing, trying to reach this host might be the work of a security engineer, right? Or, or an IT admin to set up the environment. And all you need to do is just to know what you need to scan, scan it and generate results. So in this case now, we've assumed that we've done schedule and notification. And then as it has come to save, save and run. So you click, so you want to save, you can actually save because you are not ready to launch the scan. But in this case, now, as we want to launch the scan, you now click on play and then the scan will run. You can click on that launch. Uh, sorry, it's your, it's your IP address, but don't worry, I will try to see if there is nothing. So when you click on launch, then you see something like an arrow trying to, can you see this arrow, meaning that I'm scanning that particular OS at the moment, right? And once you are able to generate a particular result, Remember what we did, we didn't go to, um, I just said, go to new scan again, come to new scan, leave that one, let that one be running. Yeah, come to new scan, click basic network scan. Basic network scan, and just try to save Windows 2 or something. I want to show us what we call credentialized scan. Because the first one we did, we did not use credential, right? And the second one is we want to use credential. What credential does is when you, when you define a particular credential on a particular target, if say for instance, the one is 165, as I can, you can use that particular IP you use as first. 192.165.135, I think that's it. That's the IP address. Right, then come to credential. is the next step, credential, right? So, because you are, um, what's it called, scanning a Windows computer, a host computer, then you click on this Windows, right? Windows, and then it will ask you for the admin credential or a credential that has elevation and um, 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 elevated privilege. So say for instance, if as is that is the, um, admin of a computer, she can now use a username and password of that particular computer to scan this PC, to scan a endpoint. And that way you will generate more vulnerabilities because it's going to do something we call elevation of privilege, right? Because it's has, because network scan has credential, it's able to probe more into the network or into the host to get you some easy vulnerability. But the first one is just a vulnerability on the surface. Why this condition last one is like you can further, you can go more and maybe try to even exploit some of the vulnerability. I'm giving you that access. I'm giving you that right to do that. So that's right between a non credential vulnerability and the credential um, scan. But please, as I don't use credential scan, you can just cancel it. Once you define the username and password, leave domain because it's on your workstation. But if it's your organization, maybe you work with Fidelity Bank, you can have Fidelity Bank.com domain for this time, you put it there. But because it's just a basic scan, right? Then automatically just leave the domain and just click OK and then you launch. I would have said, so as I said, what you can do is after this class, right? You can run another scan and use your credential and then try to compare the result of this Windows 10 with that credential with the Windows 10 with credential and see if you definitely get more vulnerabilities on Windows 10 with that credential and one with credential against this class. So guys, um, I think what we can do is 
let's forget about the VM. I think it's just giving us a leak. I will figure that one out on my computer. Maybe I'll just choose virtual box. However, for the purpose of next class, try to scan your host, like what the other did. Is she's trying to scan her host. Try to scan your host with credential and without credential, and let's compare the results. And I would also do that from my own end against next class. I would just move to the result analysis part um, directly. Is that fine? Do we understand the tax to be done against this class? Yes. Yeah, and I'm um, sorry for taking all your time. Yeah, so um, as is as please, I don't want to see your scan results, don't worry. But like you can do the scan yourself, right? And see the result. I don't want to see it because of because I recorded this session. So you can continue after this, you can stop sharing and continue after um after this class. So I'll also do the same and I will fit out some results and then show you guys next class. Sorry for taking your time today and um, I hope you have a wonderful Easter tomorrow and also a good evening. Thank you so Bye. As long as you can stop sharing, you can stop recording. I'll stop. Yeah, please, I want to ask a question. It's just like it. After doing the vulnerability assessment yeah. for management, is there like a different way that attack analysis is being written in a document, like for the reports? Yes, you, that, well, yes, we have to do the we have to and everything. Yes, yes. Tomorrow, I want us. I mean, next class, I want us to. Sh I want to show you some sample reports, right? That I have created and we can actually do that from there. And also a threat assessment report. I might maybe chat you up to get, if I can no, get that no, earlier. No because uh, for, uh, fortunately, this kind of align with, I'm currently doing my MS in cybersecurity though. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. So this currently aligns with one of the assignments that we're given we already did the, oh, okay. Okay. Vulnerability, but we are to. I need like a report to be able to submit. So okay. I'll just do that for my. I'll chat you, please. No problem. We can. We can definitely have like a. You know, thank you. Private thank chat you so and that's fine. That's fine. Um, thank you all for today. Um, yeah. Please ensure you have a result against this class. And I wouldn't do the mistake of saying I want to show the installation again. I think I would have just installed it before the class, and then we. Take it off from there. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye, bye. Thank you so much, Ella. Is that me stop recording? So I can save on the sound. Have a good evening.